Hi everybody, this is Rabbi Treilach, coming to you from the studios of Esser High School. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Mitzvah, it's also the Shabbos of Shabbos HaGadol. Shabbos HaGadol gets its name from the Avtor from Malchi, which talks about when Elio Navi will come, it will be the day of Yom HaGadol Hanora, it will be a great day. It also gets its name from a great ness, a great miracle that took place on the 10th of Nisan, which was the Shabbos before Ben Israel left Egypt. And that's where they were commanded by Hashem to take a lamb and tie it to their bedposts four days before sacrificing for Korban Pesach. That mitzvah was specific, only a one-time deal for leaving of Egypt. The other mitzvah that we got as a one-time deal was to take the blood and to paint it over our doorposts. So the question is, why was that mitzvah specific just for leaving Egypt? Why wasn't an internal mitzvah, like eating Korban Pesach? Why did we have to take four days before a lamb and tie it to our bedposts? So two reasons that I'd like to offer today was one from the Rambam and the other one from Haktav the Hakabala. The Rambam says that the Egyptians worshipped the lamb. It was their god. And therefore they had this superstition when Israel was already inculcated with this idea that the lamb was something holy and was something powerful. And God said, Bnei Yisrael, you're going to take the God of the Egyptians and you're going to slaughter it. Bakhtava Kabbalah says, it's about doing something that would endanger their lives. Imagine taking the God of the Egyptians in front of them four days before and everybody's asking you, what are you doing exactly? And you're telling them, well, we're going to uh, slaughter this lamb and realizing that they were not, they were putting lives in danger, and yet nothing was going to happen to them. So the Rambam's idea is that B'nai Israel had to get it out of their psyche, that the only thing that is powerful, truly powerful, is Hashem. And Vagtava HaGabalah is teaching us about B'nai Israel's willingness to be Moser Nefesh, to do something out of the ordinary, out of your comfort zone, way out of your comfort zone, to show your loyalty to Hashem, your love for Hashem. Both of these reasons have an educational slant. It was about educating us as a Jewish people, becoming a nation to one God. And in order to educate us, we had to do these actions to sort of wake us up and realize we're actually leaving. We are no longer slaves. Rabbi Rothstein just wrote a new book, Rabbi Gin Rothstein just wrote a new book called As If We Were There. In one of his chapters, he quotes the Klei Yaka on a posik in Parak Gimel and Shemos, Posik Yud. Paro. Now God says to Moshe, I'm going to tell you to go before Paro. And you're going to take out my nation, B'nai Yisrael, from Mitzrayim. And the Klei Yaka notes that it doesn't say Mi'eretz Mitzrayim, that, they're, that Moshe, you're taking them out from the land of Egypt, but it just says Mi Mitzrayim from Egypt. And the Kleyakar says, it's not about the physical, but it's also about the psychological, the emotional connections to Egypt. And the purpose of Yitzit Mitzrayim, one of the purposes of Yitzit Mitzrayim, was to help us become free of those chains of the culture and the society and the norms of that society and to embrace a new way of life and that way of Torah. It might be then, Shabbos HaGadol, that B'nai Yisrael was saved that the Egyptians did nothing, did not raise a hand as the Jewish people, as we took their God and tied it to our bedpost and made a very public declaration and putting in the blood outside our houses, not inside our houses, for everybody to know that Hashem was actually taking us out, that we were going to be free people. That everything we do for Pesach should try to have that educational slant, whether it's the cleaning for Pesach, whether it's inviting of the guests, and certainly as we fulfill the mitzvah tzipur yitzias mitzrayim, and like out the levincha to teach our children, everything that we do in Pesach should always have that educational slant, that we are really free people. And that we should be free from that which is contradictory to the Torah. As we live in this beautiful society, or any society that we are, 
to make sure that our values are those of the values of the Torah. I just want to end off by an idea by Rav Volbi about the bracha of Yerushalayim, that we ask Yerushalayim to be rebuilt. And then we ask for Etzemach David, we ask for Mashiach. And Rav Volbi writes in his book on education that the idea of rebuilding Yerushalayim is about planting the seeds, Etzemach David, and planting those seeds of Mashiach. Mashiach is not something that necessarily comes in a flash, but it's a process. And so I want to wish all of the SER family and all those who are watching this video that I hope that this will be the last year, or maybe it still won't be too late, that we can all bring the Quran Pesach this year, and that we look at Shabbos Hagadol, and we look at everything in Pesach with an educational slant of reminding us that we are really true people.